What makes someone reach beyond the boundaries of human experience to face the unknown? As children, we question the world around us. We learn, we accept, and gradually we lose our capacity for wonder. But some do not. The explorers, the seekers of truth. It is these pioneers who define the future of mankind. Thank you for joining us on The Slice. My name is Bill Peters, your host here at the AA Theory Group on Facebook. And we're talking today with Carol Noonan, who uh, much of you will be quite pleased to know is uh, into the Indigo Children and Ladies and much, much more. She's also a medium, and um, she has the inside track on that. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to talk to Carol, who you see now on your screen. And thank you, Carol, for joining us today. Hi, hi, Bill. Thanks for having me. Um, I guess uh, I I saw on your on your Facebook, uh, not your Facebook page, but on your web page that um, you've got some things coming up that uh, we might want to know about. So I do, I do. Um, my my website is um, being worked on at the moment, but I have a couple of things coming up, and I've just recently moved to the UK um, from Ireland. So everything's now kind of based in the UK. Gotcha. That's, that's good to know. Um, so one of my, um, one of the things that is always kind of, I'm not sure if I buy into it or not, but the Indigo Kids, you know? Uh, yeah. Uh, why don't you tell me about those so I can understand better um, okay. what that's all about? Okay, well, um, they, they, there's three groups of them. There's the indigos, then there's the crystal, and then there's the rainbow. And the indigos start to be born um, in the in the forties. Um, in the forties, um, it's not strictly um, religious that they started to be born then, but around about that time. Um, and they were very much part of the 60s. Um, they're basically children that are very aware and psychic. And then you have the then you have the crystal children, and then you have the rainbow. And each group is more more um, more gifted, more aware, more psychic than the the previous group. Um, uh, <clears throat> the interesting thing, though, about the indigos is that they're not from here. That they're not, um, they're star seeds basically. They're star seeds. Okay. <clears throat> That's interesting. Stars. I have seen that uh, that term used uh, in reference to them. So, um, of course, I much rather learn from you than learn off a crazy YouTube video because everybody's got their own spin on it. Of course. They do. Yeah. They do. And there's a lot of. Um, there's a lot of different um, information out there as well, you know, to do to do with indigos and um, all of the spiritual stuff. So, do they have a function? It, uh, yeah, I guess it's to help people to to wake up, to raise the vibration of the planet, okay. to come together as um, a collective group, a collective consciousness, yep. to raise the to raise the vibration of the the planet. That's good because we're um, vibrating real low right now. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you. Okay, so that's so so basically, um, they they would basically drive themselves into a body, basically, right? They would find their own way of being born. Well, we all do that. Well, yeah. We all. Do. We, we all do that, but they're here with a mission, a purpose to help to raise the 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 energy of the of the planet. Um, and there's more and more of us within groups that are also doing that now as well. So you've got star seeds, you've got indigos, you've got rainbows, you've got crystal, you've got um, psychics and mediums, you've got the the shaman, and all of us are, are here. Um, to help to raise the consciousness of the planet, especially the star seeds. Yeah. 
because mo because most indigos, most rainbows, and most um, most indigos, most crystals, and most rainbows are star seeds. But they are they're only realizing that they're at this level when actually they're 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 realizing that this they're part of this group, but they're also part of a bigger group with the star seeds. So most of them are star seeds, but they're only just realizing that they're indigos or rainbows or crystals. So they may go their whole life without ever realizing. Yeah. It's possible, I imagine. Yeah. That, that's possible. I mean, some people, you know, they, they don't go, they get to a level and they stay in that level. They don't go any further than that in unfolding or getting to know who they really are. You know, they're not just. They know they're different. They just don't know why. <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But there's a lot, but there's a lot of star seeds on Earth now. Um, we need them. We do. <laughs> We do, we do need them, um, and I, I have a book out at the moment that I need. I need to, I do need to re-edit it, which I'm doing at the moment. But it's, it's about the Pleiadians, and it's about there's um, a section of channeled information in there as well. But I connected to the the Pleiadians as a child, and I didn't remember that until 2010, I think it was. Um, where I began, I was doing a shamanic course in Ireland with Paul O'Halloran, who's a really great shaman. Um, and I began to have memories of having connected to them as a child. Um, but I'd already started to channel them in 2010. I realised I was channeling them, oh. and then, and then, as you know, 2011, I, I think it was, I realised I was was. I began to have memories of having connected to them as a child, um, and I think a lot of star seeds have connected to them as children and have um, uh, blocked memories, or, or they don't have that memory, you know. So it's about remembering the childhood memories as well for a lot of the star seeds. Um, one thing about the Palladians that that confuses me a little bit. Have they ever been here physically or have they always just uh, used telepathy or whatever to get to us? No, no, they, they've definitely been here physically. What I've been told by them is one of the first things I was told by them um, and it shocked the hell out of me, um, but it was, they said we are the gods and the word God in the Bible should be replaced with the word gods. So we are the gods, and the word God in the Bible should be replaced with the word gods. Um, and that really threw me, because that didn't didn't come from me, you know. Um, I mean, I was raised as a Catholic, but I don't follow that religion anymore. Right. Um, um, but yeah, so they, they... So what they've shared with me so far um, is that they... They were here physically, and they helped to they they created us in their image, and they they built Egypt, they they built the pyramids, um, they had a big influence in in Egypt, um, so yeah they were here physically, and I just quickly share this with you, Bill. Okay. But when I was um, I, I do forget how old I was now. I must have been between the ages of 10 and 12, or 9 and 12. But I was watching the telly one day with my mum, or rather my mum was watching the news, and I was stood there and watching it. And I just had this download of information. And um, it was to do with the Sphinx. And I was looking at it head on, and I just had this download of information that seems like ages, but it must have only been a few minutes. And they were just showing me, and I've... I've, I've They've, they've shown me it was them that was downloading the information to me. And I remember seeing the, um, they showed me beneath the Sphinx's paw, one of the paws, yep. and they, they walked me down the steps and they showed me that there was um, hidden information beneath the, the underneath the Sphinx paw, one of the paws. Um, and they gave me a whole load of, of a download of information that seemed like ages, but it was actually only a few minutes. Um, so yeah, they've definitely been here before, but, you know, physically before. Um, okay. I, I, I was also, um, 
I don't think I have it on me, but I was showing it to somebody earlier. Um, my family goes way back in the Middle East, like, to the beginning. And something that was passed down to me, and it's been passed down forever, is a giant's ring. It's this big. It's um, got a Buddha and elephants on it, and my great-grandfather was told that it was a key. It was, a, it was in return for a favor that his great-grandfather had done for a uh, Tibetan merchant and got him most safely over the mountains. And he gave him this, this ring. And it, I mean, I, I've never seen anybody that could wear it. I mean, it's large. It's bronze. And mm -hmm. it supposedly is the key to a door. And I recently just saw something about a door they can't open. And I was mm -hmm. like, I don't know if that's what it is for that one or not, but it would be very interesting. But the point being is my great-grandfather used to say that if you put this ring on, you see beyond what we see. Mm -hmm. And But ever since I was a kid, I've always sensed something almost here, but not quite here. And I was never sure what that was. I used to think when I got older, I said, ah, oh, it must be just me being crazy. Or it's an alternate dimension or something like that. Okay, so with that being said, I'm going back around to the Pallades stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, he was told also that far back in time, before mm. man was around, mm -hmm. someone came here and placed information in three different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. And okay, so you, I feel like you just identified one. At, underneath the par of the Sphinx. Um, some of the other administrators at the group and me as well um, feel that there must be one on each huge landmass, like one in the China area, one maybe even North America somewhere, and the other one in Africa, or Egypt, or whatever. Uh, so it would be kind of spread out just in case something happened. That takes me to the 13 tribes, because they did talk to me about the 13 tribes, and they would have been the sacred people, the ancient people going back in history. You know, you've got the Native Americans, you've got the Egyptians, the the Celtics, the, you know, all the ancient sites. Yeah. Um, and, and all of those places, um, including Stonehenge, um, has secret... Um, secret, I, I, I don't know what's secret under there, but it's secret objects or secret history beneath the ancient sites. So you've got Egypt, you've got Easter Island, you've got Stonehenge, you've got all of the, the places. And they all have um, um, secret tunnels or, or, or secret places beneath the earth. And Egypt has now been mapped. There was a woman called Sarah something, I do forget her surname, but she's, um, she's uh, I think she's in... Um, a scientist in Egypt, but she did. She managed to map uh, through with the satellites. She managed to map the area that, that mystics and psychics have been talking about for years. So yeah. it's you know it's um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, we it's have, real. We have pyramids here in the United States. You know, many. Actually. I haven't heard about those. Oh, you haven't. I haven't. Uh, no. Louisiana and. Uh, Oklahoma, and they, some of them are actually tourist attractions. Uh, they're stepped pyramids, but they're huge, and they predate the Hope Wells. So that kind of tells you the ancient nature of those. Mm -hmm. um, of course, most archaeologists say, oh, they're, they're Hope Wells. No, nah, I don't think so. Uh, I, I don't know if you've, well, they've done a lot of research, a lot of the giant, the people that research the giants and stuff have done a lot of research, myself included, actually. I'm kind of weird like that but um, if you look at the, um, the structures the Mormon Bible actually describes these cities <laughs> so, and it's like whoa wait a minute I thought he was just nuts well maybe mm -hmm. not just nuts maybe he was channeling or something without even mm -hmm. knowing that's what he was doing mm -hmm. um, I don't know um, but next time you talk uh, you you have a communication you might that's a good question to ask is just how big was the civilizations on the earth? Because I think it covered every continent. Mm -hmm. It just seems too much. There's too much out there to just be 
that small little Africa area, you know, I just don't see it. Um, no, I, I don't believe that either. Yeah. I, I think there was, um, well, I believe there was 13 tribes placed in different areas, yeah. and I think they were quite large um, groups of people. They weren't small, you know, it wasn't a small groups of people. But I'm interested to hear, that. Did you, have you tried your ring on? Have you tried to meditate with it? Uh, no, I have not. I have not done Okay. That. Uh never really thought of, thought of it. <laughs> it's, a, it's like, uh, I, I, a lot of stuff I was told when I was like 16, and um, then my grandfather died, my great-grandfather died, so all that information he might not have told me is gone, and so I would have to rediscover any secrets like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, so you gave me something to try, though. Mm. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, as a child, I was given a lot of information from the Pleiadians, and I didn't know at the time that it was them. Um, and some of the things they told me when I was that age, um, one of the things they told me was that um, that the giants existed. Yeah. You know, um, I know that part. <laughs> I've seen the proof of that. Um, and I remember thinking to myself, "That's cracked. That, 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 that's <laughs> that, you know, that's crazy." But um, there, there has been footprints found, and I'm sure you know about that, Bill. Bill that there were, have been footprints found with, um, also the dinosaur, the age of the dinosaurs as well. Love Walk because Texas, yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Because man did walk with dinosaurs. Yeah, absolutely. Are they as so old that, as they say? Uh, like, like, uh, like, I see some of the creationist uh, sites will say that, well, that's only 8,000 years ago when the dinosaurs were around. And I don't think so. <laughs> no, I don't think so. I think we are much older than, I think the Earth and, and we are much older than we're being told. I don't know exactly because I don't, they, they didn't give me a figure. Um, I tend not to do a lot of research. I tend to just get because I don't want anything to influence the what they're telling me with what I know. So I don't tend to do a lot of research. You know, um, I just let. I, I rather it would the information came from them directly. That's um, smart. Very smart of you to do that. Actually, um, do they? Um, so, do you get, what is it, impressions that you get, or is it, say, um, some weird lights? Um, great, <laughs> great. I want to get a visitation right now. <laughs> yeah, greetings. <laughs> wow, I guess it just took talking to you to do that, I guess. Um, <laughs> but, yes. Um, well, I I remember the, the, the first time I realized it was them. Um, I was on my laptop um, and I began to channel them and I was talking to a guy called um, actually Joshua Shapiro in America that is the crystal skull explorer nice. and he had yeah he had sent me an email and at first I just thought he was cracked I thought he was crazy and then things started to unfold that I realized he was just very aware uh, I almost had an opportunity to, to do some uh, tests on that skull on the um, uh, hen, uh, hedges skull there, uh, mm -hmm. but the person that I was talking to, she just vanished, and I never heard from her again. She was trying to set it up and just vanished. Oh, okay. It's weird. I don't know. I, maybe she was full of crap. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that you know, if people are full of crap, they tend to fall away. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, she fell away, all right. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe that's a good thing, Phil. Well, you know? yeah, it's better than having to travel to Vermont. I was supposedly going to have to travel to Vermont, and it would have yeah. been a wasted trip if she didn't show up. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so you saved your, 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 it saved okay. you hassle then? Yeah, about three hours drive, that's all. Yeah. That's not too bad. Yeah. But I don't even know where the skull is. It might be in Vermont. I, I believe there was 13 of them that they told me. Right, but because there was one like that. Yes, one like that. Because there was a main one, but then there was 13. Okay, so that would go in the middle, supposedly. They had, I saw a, 
some information about setting the skulls up together and, and having an energy discharge from that somehow. Um, so one would have to go in the middle to channel it, right? So mm -hmm. that would make sense, sure. Um, I guess the jury's still out on that, huh? How, the, how those would be used. I guess so, but I don't believe that. I believe they were made off world. I don't believe they were made here. Oh. The original, the original ones. Right. The, the original ones, um, because they keep talking to me about the thirteen, you know, the thirteen tribes, the thirteen crystal skulls, the thirteen star signs. Because there's not twelve. There's thirteen. Yeah. Um, the thirteen has a lot of meaning. Yeah, there's you know. power in numbers. That's for sure. Mm -hmm. And symbols as well. Yeah. Num numbers and symbols. And the sacred geometry stuff. Yeah. 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 I've done a little research into that. Um, there are others in the group that are very well versed in that stuff. Um, we have physicists and everything uh, in our group, and it's amazing to hear some of the crazy stuff they believe in. So it's like. Wow, okay, well, if they believe it, then I guess I can, too. You know? <laughs> like, yeah, um, yeah. It's hard to know anymore what to believe with so much of the uh, tripe I see on YouTube and stuff. Some of it, you can figure it out junk right away, and then other stuff makes you go, hmm. You know, mm. So it varies. It depends on how it's, it's presented. It does, but I think with the junk, there's some truth in it. Oh, yeah. I think so, you know sometimes they may want to 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 try and and prove something, but they're kind of coming from the wrong angle. They're coming from from ego, where they just want to prove it. So it ends up turning to be junk. Right. But there is elements of truth in it. Yeah. You know, it's just been changed or manipulated, yeah. changed. That you makes, know, that makes sense. Yes, absolutely. Um, I I had a. Um, a friend who swore to God that they were talking to someone from another planet uh, in their sleep. Mm -hmm. And they swore it till the day they died. They swore it, swore it, swore it, swore it. And no, wouldn't take anybody's explanations at all. And they were like, no, I know. Um, I guess my question based on that experience is, uh, would someone like the Palladians, are they the, by the way, are they the only ones that communicate that you know of in the manner that they do? Or no. They, no. No. I've, I've, they're the only ones that have connected with me um, solidly. S solidly or, um, you know, it's tangible. A strong, you know, so I... A strong connection so I, I see them I feel them I get a sense of them um, that I know there are other um, star nations um, but I haven't knowingly connected to to them in the same way that I've connected to the Pleiadians but of course that I mean there's, there's a whole um, there's a whole range of, of star nations and and different cultures out there where we're not alone we've never been alone no i can imagine you know <laughs> we're not and, it, and it's very much like the, the war of the worlds where there's um a war between light and dark and that's been going on since since day one um and that's mostly why a lot of us are here at the moment is to raise the vibration um and not to play into that um not to play into the into the play. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess it's hard not to sometimes. I guess uh, they um, sometimes we're we're shown we're misdirected on purpose, and that's not helpful to anybody. I I have a feeling that um, there's probably uh, good guys and bad guys of every in every race. I don't believe that. I mean, there's a lot of people I've talked to online that feel that um, ETs will be all benevolent, and I said, that's not necessarily true. I mean, remember, you read about wrathful gods and stuff. I mean, they obviously get angry. They obviously have yeah. emotions and stuff like that, so mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't see. I, I think yeah. you kind of do yourself a disservice by corralling yourself into one thought mode on that. 
Because for everything that exists in the universe, whether it's an angel or um, Jesus energy or Mother Mary energy or Pleiadian energy or Auntie Nelly down the road, mm -hmm. whatever it is, there's there's always something. There's always an opposite to everything that, that exists in the universe, and that is the same for the Pleiadians and angels and Jesus and Mother Mary. There's always an opposite, so you have to be careful. You have to, su you have to suss out who you're connected to and who you're <coughs> channeling, and and if the person was connecting to um, an, an ET energy when they were sleeping, they should be checking with you know who that energy is, or ask, at least asking for protection around them, because those energies are real. Okay, so so our our awareness is only one level of, of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And there's several levels. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Was it? Uh, yeah, I remember reading in an old Chinese book about there being nine, um, twelve total, thirteen total, nine that we we can attain, and then anything above that, you're basically dead. I think. I don't know, but. <laughs> It just uh, took me by surprise when I read that. I was like, hmm. And this goes, uh, we know about the first emperor and how he was supposedly going to space and back and he was able to travel. Um, he probably wasn't even from here anyway. But he, uh -huh. he supposedly taught the Chinese people everything, how to do the agriculture, how to do the everything up the way. All the sciences came from him. That's exactly exactly how it was and a lot of those people a lot of people um wouldn't have come from here because you know i had uh, an out-of-body experience when i was 12 and i had an extremely um bad childhood and i i was i was i had at that point i had chosen to leave and i was about to commit suicide I just wanted out. I'd really had enough. And it wasn't a call for a cry out, you know, because I was just, I wanted to go by myself and do it in a corner somewhere. Um, and I'd actually chosen to take tablets. And so I lay down in my bed and I was crying and everything. And I didn't, hadn't taken anything at that point. But the next thing I knew, I was um, in the corner of my room on the left, on the, on the right hand side of the, the ceiling, looking down on my body. And I met up with Jesus, um, who took me on the journey for a good three or four hours. Um, and when I came back, um, I had changed because of the experience. Everything within me had changed because of what he showed me and the peacefulness as well. The whole experience was just beautiful. Um, and I now believe that he was Pleiadian. I, I, I believe he was Pleiadian. Um, and I know there's a few people that have also also talk about that as well. Um, so there, there would have been people in history that wouldn't have come from here. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, actually, considering uh, some of the things that some people have done. Uh, my word, um, the Yellow Emperor was just one of thousands over the course of history, I'm sure, that had something a little extra special going on. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, Jesus falls in that category along with uh, a few others, uh, uh, Moses and all them. Mm -hmm. So, and there were many that believed that some of those guys were, uh, was it Moses that was supposed to be born with glowing eyes? One of them. I don't know. I haven't heard that. Yeah, I, well, I hadn't heard it from my church, I'll tell you that. <laughs> um, <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. No, I'm was, joking. That was I'm something joking. that didn't quite make it in the, my uh, catechism classes there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, so so the Palladians and the Indigo children are connected in a big way. Then. Yeah, absolutely. Which absolutely. is interesting because I never had actually realized that until you had mentioned it. So that's good to know. Um, what, they're not the same as the black-eyed children. That's a whole I haven't, phenomenon. I, I, I haven't heard anything about the black-eyed children, so I don't know. Because I don't research stuff. Well, I, right. I, I just get it from from the Pleiades. We've been getting a lot of reports uh, all over the world, actually, of um, uh, 
children with completely the whites are even black apparently i i don't know i've never seen one but they say it's unnerving to see these things they come to the door and they're menacing they might even be demonic according to some people personally i'm not so sure that they're not smoking crack or something but but i don't discount anything anymore because i every time i do i get taught that it's is true <laughs> so so um i try not to even naysay too much there's only one thing i naysay and that's flatter and other than that i'm fairly open to most ideas um but flat earth people great i be nuts <laughs> flat earth yeah there's a lot of them yeah, there is i'm i met a, an interesting guy in in ireland um before i left who was talking about the flat earth and that's one of the things that i don't believe in good i just yes, i don't <laughs> just don't don't believe it and you know i would be a believer of most of the conspiracy theories but that's one that i just i don't there's no possible yeah. way that's true yeah uh yeah. maybe maybe we um we came from somewhere I've, I've always thought that earth was a zoo planet i felt like the races different races seem to have come from different planets um I, I talked to a scientist for instance who told me that chinese people could not have evolved on this planet because they they have all the characteristics of a binary system by two suns there's no real reason for them to have evolved the way they did okay that said on the other hand some races did evolve here according to what we can determine i almost think that maybe the moon was the ship that brought some of the races here i don't know i guess we'll have to go back up there and see but um, <laughs> i don't know they may not ever tell us you know we would never know uh the truth probably from the government anyway but they have their own agenda uh, very much have their own agenda yeah i don't know what it is but I know it's evil. <laughs> well, it's not good. It's not good. Um, no. And I think the I think the royal family are very much part of that as well. You think the reptilians? <laughs> yes, I do. Yeah, I've heard it before. Um, yes, I do. There is a gene that is related to that. I believe I have it as well. Great, um, but but. Um, on my mother's side, they were always they were pretty high up in Britain uh, royalty uh, way back. But um, and in any case, yeah, I've seen that even George Bush can go, can trace their roots back to the same as the Queen of England and and several. That's other interesting. Wars. Yeah, and Bill Clinton as well. Believe it or not. That's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So that's kind of scary if it's true. I'll tell you that. Uh huh. So maybe there is a council of twelve like you hear about that picks who's going to run what, and they may not even be from this planet. But I would agree with you. I don't think they are. Anything is possible. Um, <laughs> um, I, I do. I, I I think they're reptilian. Yeah, you know, that's some something's in there that we don't know about, and that's why they have their own special positions. Yeah. They may not be what they seem, but I don't think Michael Jackson was reptilian. However, a lot of people who said he was. No, I think Michael Jackson was a very spiritual man. Yeah. I think his consciousness was um, really up there, mm -hmm. really up there. And I, I think he was, um, I think he was hounded. I think they, they. You know, knew who he was on this on a soul level, and I think they went for him. That's what I think. Yeah, he was too sensitive. He was very sensitive, and probably too sensitive to deal with the earth the way it is. Um, I mean, a lot of people that I know of that had have tried to commit suicide or have committed suicide, they were so sensitive to mm -hmm. things that they just mm -hmm. couldn't deal with that sensitive sensitivity. But that varies person to person. So everybody's got a different story, but you know, um, I think in a but lot it, of cases, empaths really pay a price. Yeah, we do. But you have to, you have to, in order to get balance and to be here and to be present and to live life, you have to, um, 
you have to be part of it and protect yourself, you know, because yeah. otherwise you'll you'll be living in a cage in, in a cave in Tibet, you know, somewhere where there is there's no um, there's nothing to, for you to be sensitive to. Right, right. No overloading of senses. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. that would be. Uh, I imagine that's terrifying. I've usually done well. I say I hate people, but I don't really. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's I just, good. I hate what people do sometimes, but it's the nature of the beast. <laughs> like, like what? Well, like kill each other. You know, it's um, the things that people do just for their own entertainment that hurt others. It's really not. It doesn't seem to me to be inherent to who the human race is, and I think it's an aberration of who we are. Um, kind of worried about the trend I see with the youth and stuff because there are a lot of people out there today who have no joy except for that pain that they can inflict on others and that concerns me to a large degree and I'm just hoping that either they see the light because I have seen people change you know from yeah people yeah but it's rare but it happens <laughs> but yeah I get I get concerned about where we're heading sometimes when it comes to stuff like that. I, I feel like um, the soul of our whole existence has been corrupted somehow, somewhere along the way. And um, it's going to take a lot of people reaching up to catch the rising stars to, uh, to get through that, I think. Um, so we'll see what happens. But um, I, I try to keep my confidence in the human spirit alive and don't give up, you know, that's hard to do the way people are today. And so, anyway, that's you know, just one of my little quirky things. Yeah. <laughs> but, but to me, that's part of the war between light and dark. Yeah. So, so for you then, it would be important to, to continue the work that you're doing because you're shining light on, on what you're doing and right. you're helping, you're also helping to raise the consciousness oh, right. so so keep doing what you're doing and reach out to more people you know yeah I'd love to reach more people we're going to re have you reach more people after this so um, yeah um, do you have the name of your book um it's yeah it's called the Pleiadian child oh okay so this is part of that okay yeah yeah okay yeah and it's available on Amazon okay um, but I am re-editing it at the moment. I'm re-editing it at the moment, so. Awesome. That should, it's exciting to uh, know that's coming back or coming up with a revision. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, is there anything else you'd like to say before I sign us off? Or? Um, is there anything I want to say? Um, just, you know, a lot of this, a lot of the ET energy and the Star Nation energy is often looked at as being cracked or crazy. But you know, the, the Pleiadians and Star Nations are real. You know, we're, we're, we're not alone. We've never been alone. And we've been deceived on a, on a massive scale of, of, what, of, of what's really going on and, and reality. And the truth is so far from, from what we've been told. And just you know, for people to, to read and educate themselves and find out what is, you know, what is real for them. Yeah. Oh, I better ask you one more thing, to, or somebody will, uh, half the group will kick me. Uh, they, there's a large portion of the group that believes that people like Nikolai Tesla and Einstein and um, Leonardo da Vinci and those folks, Nostradamus perhaps, I know what you're going to say. Edgar Casey, we're all connected to this other information source, which many call the Akashic Record, which mm -hmm. I think probably the whole universe is connected to that somehow. Um, so I guess my question is, uh, do you believe that that is one of the things that's been going on? They kind of seed us with, with uh, these amazing minds every now and then? Or? Yes, I do. And I think a lot of those people aren't from here. I think they were advanced souls that came to Earth to 
to help to move us forward, to progress us. Um, and if you look at the time of Leonardo um, da Vinci, there was a lot of art then that um, with UFOs in the artwork around that time. And I think I think there was a high um, activity then at that time, you know, in, in that time in history, I think there was a lot of activity um, that was visible okay. to the naked eye. Um, but a lot of those people, including Merlin, I think Merlin was a real person. I do too, actually. Yeah, I, th I think that that there has been uh, underplayed. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think you can. The trouble is, is that they go so far back that there's no real easy way to get the information other than myths and legends. Um, at least but there yet. is. Not yet. But there is. But there is, Bill. There yeah. is, and it's it's. Learning to channel information, oh, right. learning to sit and meditate and channel the and channel information. Because when you when you when someone tells you something, like you've had several past lives in Egypt and and Romania and Native America and blah blah blah. You know, whenever I get that during a reading, I always recommend the person goes and gets past life regression because it's different when someone tells you something, and when you experience it. Yeah, definitely. But there's a lot of us that are well able to channel information, including you, and you know, meditate and channel information and write it down. And that comes from the horse's mouth. And when you, when you experience that, that no one, there's no one on this planet that could tell you that's not real because you would know in yourself that's real. So there is a way to access the information. I haven't been able to ask for travel. <laughs> I've, I've done that, but so far as I've been, other than these things I see every now and then, I don't even know if it's real or not, I'm probably nuts. Uh, what do you see? I feel like there's another, I can hear people sometimes, you know, that, uh, I don't know how, it's, how to explain it, but it's almost like if I close my eyes, it's almost like um, they're in another room and I can hear them conversing. Um, I don't. I don't know. I always, I, I've come to the conclusion as I went into more of the paranormal stuff, um, my daughter and her husband have started a group that they do paranormal investigations and all that. And some of the stuff I've seen there has convinced me, yes, okay, that's good. That's where there, it's there. Um, but this is beyond that. This is different than that. It's uh, almost like another reality, but it's right here. Almost can touch it. Not quite. Yeah. Not so so that that to me sounds very much like it's spirit whether it's your guides or it's um your your ancestors like your your oh, granny I, great grand I don't think so because I can hear like things on a like you hear on a street mm -hmm. like bustling people and uh, it's almost like I'm maybe tuning into a past time or something I don't know uh, maybe it's a, another world like ours. It's just a little bit different vibration. I don't know. Um, I, it's hard to understand, but yeah, it could be something like that. But I've heard it ever since I was sixteen. Um, it's not. It has never gone away like I thought it might. <laughs> it's like, um, and do you do you see the people in your mind's eye, or do you get a sense of them? I, I know there's bodies there. I know there's yeah. physical things, but I couldn't. Like pick them out of a crowd or anything. It's, it's more uh, hazy than that. It's it's not focused. Um, and I've tried to literally focus in on it, and it doesn't get any clearer. It just stays right there in that murky, mm -hmm. foggy feeling thing. You know, it's kind of weird. Mm -hmm. It's not normal. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever asked? Have you ever asked what? who they are or oh, where I, they're from I, or i have tried to i get no no interaction i'm just kind of an eavesdropper it seems like mm -hmm. um so it isn't like they're trying to communicate or anything i don't get that sense at all i get more of i'm kind of intruding on what's going on so i feel like i'm i'm spying on them kind of so i don't know what i'm going through there but um it's probably something I don't. Maybe I don't want to know what's going on. But, <laughs> but um, if it ever comes clear, I'll be happy to get that off my mind. 
because that's always been there and I never, you know, it's been a lot of years that I've had that happen. And I just used to think maybe I'm just not, so roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, that's, yeah, that's about the extent of my uh, contact stuff as far as that goes. I do get insights though once in a while mm. I get this flash of knowledge that all of a sudden I know everything mm. about what I got to do and I don't mm. know how that ever happens either but it happens um which is scary especially when you do what it's what it's telling you and it works that's crazy so <laughs> you know that's kind but of but it's great it is great it's great it helps yeah. me in the moment for sure that gets me out of a lot yeah. of jams that way uh, yeah <laughs> But anyway, um, geez, we've been talking almost an hour. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Um, there was a lot more to talk about than I thought. <laughs> um, yeah, but it would it would be really lovely to 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 do this again and connect in with oh, you again. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm always available. Um, mm -hmm. I do have. I don't have many interviews themselves. I do shows on specific subjects a lot of times. Uh, mm -hmm. The only other interview I got coming up is with. Um, Andrew Collins, um, Alex Collins, I'm sorry. Uh, he's coming up in May. But other than that, I'm wide open, you know. <laughs> so um, I'm kind of, this, the interview stuff, I've done a few, but it's kind of a new trend I'm going into uh, with okay. the show. And um, that way I can get authors and, and people who, who have the information right mm -hmm. in front of them instead of me telling them about these people um i think it makes a lot more sense and it's a lot more legitimate than just mm -hmm. just going ahead and you know talking my butt off or <laughs> what i think about it you know um it's more interesting to me to hear it right from the horse's mouth and yeah um it's really a lot more um believable that you hear it from someone that's actually right in the throes of everything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, yeah, I'd be I'd be very pleased to do, do as many as you want as far as that goes. Um, yeah, that'd be great, Bill. You know. Awesome. Well, yeah. folks, we've been here with Carol Noonan, author of The Lady's Child, and that is currently being re-edited. So stay tuned for that. It's on Amazon and. You can get the original copy if you want, but um, if you want to get the updated version, you just wait for that. Um, otherwise, um, there we go. Can I just say, Bill, if people do want to um, order a copy of the re-edited version, if they could send me an email yep. to to the Pleiadian Child at hotmail .com, and it's called the Pleiadian Child. Okay. Perfect. Well then, we look forward to talking to you again. And uh, okay, love. And if you've ever got any questions, just um, message me on Facebook. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Well, you're you're in my friend. Are you my are my friends list now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. I, I thought that happened when we initially contacted each other. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I will. Um, I'll certainly keep you posted. And uh, if I have any further questions, I'll give you send you a little message and we can no. settle it up. Okay, great. <laughs> All, right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Carol. It's been great. Yeah, time. thanks, Bill. It's uh, been really nice. Yeah, uh, thank you. Great. You have a great day. Thanks. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. What makes someone reach beyond the boundaries of human experience to face the unknown? As children, we question the world around us. We learn, we accept, and gradually we lose our capacity for wonder. But some do not. The explorers, the seekers of truth. It is these pioneers who define the future of mankind. It's your eyes, it's your eyes, it's your eyes.